lot nicer. All right, so this weekend I am in Suchus, Georgia, northern Georgia, almost North Carolina, almost Tennessee, at the Just Aircraft Flying event. And maybe you guys have seen this crazy, there it is, this crazy airplane and somewhere on Facebook or YouTube or where else is it on, Vimeo. But I'm here with Tony Zorn, and he's gonna give us a tour of the Swamp Monster. Hello, I'm Tony Zorn, and I'm from Lyons, Georgia, and this is the Swamp Monster. It's uh, a woody pusher that uh, I bought probably 20, 25 years ago. I'd owned a couple before when I used to do aerial photography. It was a good platform for that, and uh, I have uh, got a lot of time in this one. It has been a, uh, a staple of mine, like I say, for over 25 years, and uh, after tearing it up twice, trying to demand more out of it than it was able to deliver. I decided to start modding it up and making it more capable for the stuff that I enjoy doing, which is the backcountry flying. 2,000 hours. Minimum. In this airframe. Maybe more, yes. You fly a lot. I do, and since I retired, I fly on average four and a half, five hours every day. That's amazing. But I have always, flying has always been a passion. You know, some folk hunt, some folk fish. I've always loved airplanes. And uh, I, on my Facebook page, folks can see, you know, I uh, whenever the bug bit me, uh, it, it really, you know, it, it's one of those things in life you find that gives, it has given a lifelong fulfillment and uh, and just the reward that you rarely find in a lifetime. Uh, you know, some folks, you'll find certain things you enjoy for a short period of time, then you move on, not airplanes. So what, I, I assume that your mission changed over 25 years. So initially when you bought this, what was your mission? And then after 10 years, what did your mission become to uh, be able to change it up so much? Well, uh, you know, the mission of this airplane for me, whenever the many years I had it before and all the hours was just low and slow. I've always enjoyed that. Uh, I also do competition aerobatics. And about, oh, a few years ago in my competition aerobatic uh, flying had to come to an end due to a, a physical condition called the wobblies that kind of wrecked me being able to do that. And so I needed something. I knew I was gonna have to leave that. So I, I got to watching and I seen, gee whiz, there are guys taking these airplanes and landing them in places that, you know, all over that I'd never considered. I mean, I landed in hay fields and stuff, but I'd never considered some of the options and some of the things that you can actually do. And I said, well, that looks like fun. And, you know, not to be outdone, I then decided to try and ask the Woody Pusher before it became the Swamp Monster to start doing some of that. And as I say, after tearing it up twice, it uh, it became evident to, to me I either had to make this more capable or I had to start over by something different. But would have never sold <clears throat> the Woody Pusher. There, not this this particular one. But uh, that's kind of what made the uh, the change to this kind of flying. And whenever I started first modding it and changing it and doing things that I thought would make it more capable, anything you can do to an airplane that will make it fly slower is going to make it more backcountry capable. The biggest thing you can do to any airplane, I don't care what it is, is the big wheels and tires. That's the first mod to do to anything that's gonna give you off-field capability, period. Most airplanes now will stall well under 50, and with a stall speed that low, most of them are already capable of landing in most backcountry places. But then after doing that, if you can get the wing to where you can get the stall speed down under 40 in the mid-30s, now you're getting serious and playing in the same sandbox, the $350,000 carbon cubs and those guys are playing in. Well, the engine is a Continental C90 and uh, on the last rebuild, which was just under two years ago, 1100 hours ago, two years, 1100 hours, that'll tell you how much flying it gets done. I pumped the engine. I did the same thing to it that I did to my uh, aerobatic airplane. It's got 10 to one pistons, port and polished with the hot cam. They say it's supposed to be 120 set up that way. I doubt that it's maybe 110 if that. But it does better with that. With the extra mods and all that I put on it, I'm probably a little heavy. I'm an 860 pound airframe. So even with 860 pounds, 110 horsepower is not a lot. But for what I do, I don't ever land anywhere that I've got to out climb, you know, a 50 foot obstacle in, in 300 feet. Now I can get on and off 200 foot sandbar easy, but I make sure it's something I don't have to out climb anything coming up the end. But what do you, uh, take off, cruise and approach speeds? I, I rotate at about 32. Uh, off the ground at about in the very low 30s. You can watch my videos, see that I'm off the ground in very low 30s. Uh, 
cruise if I'm in a real hurry at 70. Uh, that's with the this that's with the uh, climb prop. Now if I put a cruise prop on, I can get up in the mid 80s, but I obviously then suffer in the the uh, takeoff area. But anyhow, uh, and again, approach speeds. You can watch some of my videos. Approach speed is just under 40 on on short short final touchdown in the mid 30s generally. Hey, before we get too deep into this, let me thank our sponsors that make all of this possible. Great companies like Airworks, AirTech Coatings, Acme Aero, Stoll Creek Aviation, Kit Plane Parts. So take a moment after this video to say hello to all of them and remember to check out the affiliate links in the description below. And remember, just build it. Let's get back to it. All right, Tony, so walking around your plane, uh, obviously there's a lot of new things attached to this from the classic Woody Pusher. Yep. So walk us through the different things that you personally have added to increase the performance. First thing that I did, trying to give me more uh, lift, for, uh, is the uh, belly flap. Believe it or not, that's nothing more than a stencil aileron that had been damaged. I got from a buddy of mine. Rebuilt it, added some area to it. That added some and helped the, it flies the front of the nose up and actually gives me better uh, low speed uh, control. Then after doing that, I decided, you know what? Some split flaps will work. I originally had flaps in some of my old videos. I had flaps mounted to the uh, lift struts. That didn't provide anything for extra lift. So I started with split flaps, half the length of that, that stopped right here at the jury struts. Now the original design had no flaps at all. The original Woody Pusher has nothing, no flaps, no. Uh, and the original Woody Pusher still does good. It stalls, you know, in the, in the mid 40s. So, I mean, it does all right, but, you know, nothing like this. And then, too, the angle of attack is much higher without the flaps. Then you have the belly flap. Then I uh, went to the uh, split flaps. Those are 80-inch uh, long with 12-inch 12, 12 cord. The split flaps are slaved, if you'll see, slaved to the belly flap. And then the belly flap is activated by that rod that goes into a three-position flap handle in the cockpit. And it lowers the stall speed probably right at 10 miles an hour when you got all the flaps full on. So yeah. it really worked. But then I uh, had a buddy who uh, had built several Zenas. He had wrecked one and he had a pair, he had a set of uh, Zen Air slats. So I just bought those, built me some brackets, mounted those. I obviously have VGs behind it. And that is probably, slats, a lot of folks have misconceptions. Slats are effective and make the wing more effective at all air speeds, not just slow high angle of attack speeds. The wing is much more efficient at any airspeed. You can tell it in the flying, especially if you've got a lot of time in your airplane. You can really tell it. But you cannot get the wing to stall and break. Even whenever it quits flying, all it does is just, it, it just mushes. It does not break as it is. But anyhow, so we have slats. We have VGs that are mounted behind that. Then after that, I decided, you know, one of the biggest things you can do to any airplane is add more wing area. If uh, you want to make any airplane fly slower, you can add more wing area, so you're now carrying the same weight with with uh, more weight, you know more wing area carrying the same weight. So I built the two foot carbon fiber tips. Well, that had a positive effect, but it had a neg negative effect in that it slowed down my roll rate. Well, I didn't like that, so I then, after having put the two foot carbon fiber tips on, I decided, well, I don't like being without my roll rate, so I then built 22 inch spoiler boards, and I slaved those to my ailerons, and uh, they only deflect up. That took a little bit of engineering to give thought to how to make that work without problems. But anyhow, so that uh, that gave me my roll rate back. I actually, my first uh, test flight with just the spoiler boards, I drape, 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 uh, drooped the cables over my shoulders and just flew with spoiler boards. I almost had the same roll rate with nothing but spoiler boards as just the ailerons had. Wow. That's how effective they are. Well, you got them way out here at the tips if you would give some thought to that. And then, uh, so that pretty much covers the front end, other than, I don't know if I pointed out, I've got nine inch uh, gear leg extensions on the, the uh, stock Woody Pusher landing gear. You need, any airplane needs to, whenever, it, if you're serious about backcountry flying, any airplane needs to land at about the same speed that it stalls at. So you need a deck angle that's gonna be the same angle of attack as you're gonna stall at. A lot of airplanes are not that way. The Jess Highlanders are. So I naturally I've increased the deck angle of just sitting on the ground with the nine inch gear extensions. And then uh, you come back to the tail section. Not a lot, a lot of mods back here. It's a stock J3 Cub tail, which is not standard on a Woody Pusher. This one, the guy who originally built it and finished it in 76, it was that way. But anyhow, I've, because of the high thrust line setting, any power change that you make, you have a lot of pressures that affect the control uh, pressures whenever you change uh, power settings. Well, 
I mounted the uh, servo tabs for that to kind of help offset that. And they work similar to like the spades do on the ailerons. On the tail wheel, I had, because you gotta remember on a woody push, you got much more tail weight than what you would have on a stock airplane. I've got almost 300 pounds of tail weight here. Engine being on the back, way heavier than most airplanes. So it plows a considerable amount and saw stuff. I had uh, the option of either spending $3,000 for the baby bush, which works really well, or doing what I always like to do. I try and, you know, build a better mousetrap, cheaper. So I went to the local aircraft spruce and specialty in my hometown, better known as Lowe's, and got the scalping wheels. And I've got a standard API stock tail wheel, six inch, with five inch uh, scalping wheels on either side to help. It's actually a half inch short, or, or smaller than the, the wheel in the center. So on hard stuff, they don't even touch. But on the soft stuff, whenever it starts penetrating, then the, you know, the outriggers help carry the loads. Lower ground pressure. Tony, so tell us this kind of a unique wing that's flying above your horizontal stab here. Well, I named it the Servo Vader because what it does, I could not get my airplane to stall. I couldn't get the wing to stall at uh, high angles of attack with high power because the high thrust line, it would just push the nose over. So I needed more pitch authority. The only way to get that was either go bigger tail, something like a super cub tail, or just increase the, the elevator uh, area. Well, I just built an extra elevator and mounted it five inches above the extra elevator. And uh, it basically just, it's slaved to the main elevator in the back. And it basically just gives me more pitch authority. So now whenever I'm at high power settings, I can stall the wing and I still got a good inch, inch and a half of back stick. Okay. So being that your thrust line is well above. Very high. Your tail feathers. Yep. You're, you're, you're capturing a little bit more of that. You are, but you are, but when you add power on an engine like this, imagine that thrust line is pushing right through where that, that crankshaft is. So it's trying to push the nose over. Unlike a tractor, it's pulling straight through. Wherever that crankshaft is, that's where the thrust line is. So when you're adding power on mine, it's steady trying to push the nose of the airplane over. Well, if you're at high angles of attack and you're already slow, so your control surfaces have very little effectiveness anyhow, well, you add more power, that elevator is not able to overcome the push of that nose going over. So I could not get my wing to stall at high power settings. I could do a zoom stall, but that's not what you want. You want to be able to stall the wing at high power settings without zoom stalling. And I was running out of back stick. That was the purpose of that. All right, Tony, the other thing I see really unique to your plane, your airframe that the Woody Pusher did not have is uh, a full canopy enclosure. Talk to me about that for a second. Right, well, you know, uh, I've seen and even have some of the old origi original Woody Pusher uh, newsletters. Everybody tried different canopies. They were trying it for different reasons, obviously, to control the... It's, you get beat to pieces in the back seat without a canopy. I don't care, you know. So they were trying to do it to try and, you know, tame the back, back seat air. But I was trying to do it to try and just get out of the weather because it's cold wintertime, you know, and I like to fly year-round. So long and the short, I decided to, to do it here and actually I tapered to fit, to fit the uh, front bow bowed out at the sides to give me elbow room, and then after that, enclosed it to where uh, I'm in a total enclosure. When I shut it, the biggest benefit anymore, believe it or not, it's not that it closes out the weather, though that's neat in the wintertime, but it kills all kind of noise, because the Woody Pusher is a very rackety airplane. I mean, it, it makes a lot of noise, but the point is, yeah, the the, uh, the canopy something I did, I don't, I don't remember how many years ago, but it was wintertime. I had flown the thing all the way to Virginia, and a ski suit come back, froze I said I will solve this problem and that was kind of you know they say again that necessity is the mother of invention and that was a necessity for me to enjoy my flying I fly because it's fun anything takes the fun out of my flying something scares me I'm very uncomfortable uh, a lot of things take the fun out of flying that was one of them I was not going to fly like that so all right Tony well thank you very much for the uh, the tour of your aircraft if somebody wants to follow you on your many, many adventures that you do daily, where can they find you? Well, I um, started a YouTube channel called The Swamp Monster, and I wish everybody would like and subscribe because, again, I understand that's where it's at. And uh, i got a Vimeo channel also. Vimeo uh, is, uh, you can go to that Vimeo.com uh, there, carry you. But the point is, is uh, so Facebook, the Big Tire Pilots, i got a lot of videos on there, and uh, but primarily on The Swamp Monster on YouTube's name of my channel. All right, well, thanks again. You bet. to like and subscribe. Also check out our sister channel at EAC Aviation Podcast on YouTube 
which also can be found on Podbean, iTunes, and Google Play. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.